Hi, I'm Father David, and let us continue our journey together as we come to know more and more this great friar, St. Anthony of Padua. Let's look at some facts about the death of St. Anthony. St. Anthony died on June 12th and was buried outside the basilica that was eventually to house his remains. In 1263, Anthony's body was exhumed to be reburied in the recently completed basilica. Again, on the evening of January 31st in 1981, the body of the saint was exposed to the faithful in what is called the Chapel of the Relics in the Basilica of St. Anthony. Thousands of people came to pay respects. His casket was reopened and a great deal was discovered about him and his death due to the progress made in forensic medicine. The bones of the skeleton were in excellent condition, probably because of the many herbs and spices that were put into the casket with his body. A great deal of information about Anthony can be ascertained from examining his remains. He was probably about 5'7". The average height of people of his day was 5'4". So Anthony was taller than the average man of his time. He had kind of a narrow face and deep set eyes, a very Mediterranean looking man. He had long fingers and he had enlarged knees and feet also which would be from his walking and kneeling. He was bright and conscious when he died. Anthony died at about 40 years old, basically of fatigue and exhaustion and poor nutrition. This would be due to his constant traveling from town to town, preaching, and from his fasting and taking very little care from himself. A few days before he died, Anthony had left Padua. He had not been feeling well due to just a general fatigue. He had gone to the town of Campo San Piero, where Anthony asked the friars to build him kind of a cell or a platform in a walnut tree from which he was able to preach to the crowds who flocked to hear him. On the day of his death, he had come down from the tree to have lunch with his friars. While he was at the table, he suffered some sort of episode so that he was unable to walk, possibly a stroke. His brother Friars lay him on a straw bed and knowing that he was dying, Anthony asked to be taken to St. Mary's Friary in Padua. That is where he wanted to die. The Friars laid Anthony in a cart and began the journey to Padua. But while on the journey, Anthony grew much weaker. The Friars who had come out to meet him noticed that the saint's worsening condition was getting even worse and begged him to stop at the friar's house in Arcella, which is right next to the monastery of the poor Clares. He was reminded that he would cause a great commotion if he entered Padua. So Anthony agreed to stop at the town of Arcella, which was about 20 miles from Padua. Here he made his last confession and then he sung a hymn to the Blessed Mother called, O Glorious Lady. After that, Anthony raised his eyes heavenward and a startled look came over him that seemed to last for a while. One of the friars said, Brother, what do you see? And Anthony replied, I see my Lord. Since Anthony had wished to die at St. Mary's in Padua, his body was entombed there. When Anthony's body was exhumed in 1263 to be reburied in the basilica built in his honor, his body had decomposed, except for his tongue, which was reported to be as moist and soft as it was in life. That miracle seemed to verify Anthony's golden tongue in preaching. In life, he proclaimed God's unconditional love, and in death, he showed us that God's love was made real. St. Anthony, you preach the gospel by your life and even by your death. Open our hearts to the call of Jesus Christ and help us to proclaim the gospel values as you did. Make us sensitive to the suffering of the poor, those who are ill and those who are marginalized. As you cared for the poor and those forgotten by society, Make us aware of those who go without, and in our prayer for them, 
Give us the will to live a gospel life as you did. Amen.